Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The value of God's words. Everlasting God will deliver to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba, Olumba, a Buddha supernatural teacher. First lesson, Luke chapter 5, verses 34 to 35. And he said unto them, Can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Second lesson, Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 48. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house, and dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock, and when the floods arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Golden text, John chapter 12, verses 49 to 50. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Quote, Brethren, we have been told in the Holy Bible that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the same Word was God himself. The word referred to here is not the word you speak daily in the world, but it refers to God, and I want to reveal him to you. I want to reveal to you the value of the word of God. Christ said, I know that my word is life eternal. If you know the value of word and the benefit derived from the word, even the power which is embodied in it, you would not have toyed with it, because when you have this word, you will have eternal life. If there is anyone who knows the value of the word, he would not want to miss practicing it, even for one second. The spirit is the only invisible thing which exists in the world, and it is the most powerful of all things. The spirit is the most expensive thing you can think of, but you do not know this and do not even want to have it. But you rather go after material things like silver, like cars and ships, among other things. You do not seek the word which is given to you daily. The life we live, the heaven and earth, all the money we find in this world, all comes from these spoken words of God. Power, beauty, good health, wealth, and all good things emanate from the word, but you have refused it, and you do not even believe in it. This is what I am revealing unto you today. Come what may, you are bound to know and believe the word. When you want vision, I want to ask, what is vision? Is it not the same word of God? Realize that vision is like the cloud, and within a short space of time it will pass away. Vision is what can be seen with the physical eyes, and this is perishable, but the spirit is invisible, and it is eternal. The complication in vision and spirit lies in their duration and existence. Therefore, if you see the things which are visible, they are perishable. And what benefit do you derive in perishable things? The spirit is an invisible object which you have faith in and it abides eternally. The spirit is life eternal. It is eternal glory eternal salvation, eternal honor, and eternal power. The spirit, in a nutshell, is everything eternal. When you testify of seeing God face to face, I laugh you 
to scorn. Do you mean you can see the spirit? The spirit is God and no one had ever seen him face to face. As you parade here daily, if you do not believe that the word given to you is God, it is life, power, peace, joy, good health and every good thing you can think of, then you are wasting your time. But on the other hand, if you hear all the words preached unto you here daily and put them into practice, then you have eternal life. If you are given a bank with all the deposits in it to own, or given a whole city, you have not been given anything and so have nothing. But if you abide by the word given here daily, then you have eternal life. You do sing the spiritual chorus which says that the word of God is very powerful. But you do not believe in the potency of this word. You equally sing that there is something more than gold and that thing is the word of God. Yet you do not believe when you are singing. Therefore, right from today, let us not come here to sing and dance only, but let us come here with the attentive spirit to receive the word of God, which gives eternal life, eternal glory, eternal peace, power, good health, and eternal salvation. I pray the Father to grant you the ability to receive these words and know what they constitute, so that you may abide by them and guard them as treasures in your heart. It is stated that heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God will abide forever. Read this first lesson again. First lesson, Luke chapter 5, verses 34 to 35. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Brethren, can you now realize the meaning of the statement that the word of God, when it falls to the ground, must break mighty rocks and then spring up to accomplish its will? Hitherto, people, are, people never knew the importance of fasting. Then, the word spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded in the lesson above, is God, power, and eternal life, and this word will remain the same till eternity. Without fasting today, no one who wants God could see him. There are no two ways about it. Anyone who seeks power, seeks love, and indeed everything, must have to do this through prayer and fasting. You have been aware that the children of the bride cannot fast when the bridegroom is with them. But a time would come when the bridegroom would be taken away. Then can they fast. Because of that very word of Christ, the little children and the elders all fast today to show you the potency of the word of God. This is this very word is power, it is life, joy, peace, wealth, health, knowledge, and the word itself is eternal. The word is God, it is Christ, and it is the Holy Spirit, and the word indeed constitutes everything. Spiritual chorus. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word of God is powerful. Brethren, a word can be uttered within one second and it vanishes, but its efficacy will endure forever. Word is the spirit as well as God whom you have been looking for. That is why any time you receive any spoken word of God, you should hold fast to it. And once you do this, you have peace, you have joy, life, wealth, 
You have power and you will not have any more problem. God is an all sufficient who meets the need of every person. We are told that if we knew Christ after the flesh, when he came as the Son of Man, the Son of God and God himself, we know him no more in that wise today. And the only medium through which you may contact with Christ today is through prayer and fasting. All the things you all the things you are not able to receive from God physically, you have received them spiritually. No one knows God physically, but spiritually there is no person who can hear the word of God carnally, but you hear him in the spirit. As long as we abide in the flesh, we stand a million miles away from God. But in spirit, we are within the range of his existence. He dwells in you and you abide in him forever. Hence, it is said that a prayerful person is sure to have life. That is the reason why he said in the presence of the scribes and Pharisees that the children of the bride chamber cannot fast, but they will have to fast when the bridegroom is taken away from them. When our Lord Jesus Christ was physically present, of what use was prayer and fasting? But when he was gone, you now pray and fast to establish contact with him. The same situation is prevalent here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. All those who are far away in other countries like America, India, Russia and other Western world countries, with prayer and fasting they see the Father lavishly manifesting himself in them. He answers their prayers and gives them their desires accordingly and they continue to give wonderful testimonies about his physical manifestation. You are told that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be offended by this revelation. Consider how the Israelites challenged God to come out for them to see him. They queried him why he should only send Moses to them. Eventually when God decided to appear, their eyes were opened and they were struck with great fear and awe. Let no one seek to know God out of the flesh, otherwise you will perish. Anyone who desires God God blessing, let him do this through the Spirit. Do it by prayer and fasting. You have been told that faith does not constitute the things we behold with the carnal eye. Listen to all the words spoken by God. Believe in them and put them into practice and then will you have eternal life. Do not desire God to give you money or clothes, shoes or house or any of these things, but beg him to give you the word which is spirit. And this is exactly what you are lacking. A great number of people who come here are not seeking the word which is life, but they look for money for house, good health, husband, wife, relations and all the material things of this world and as a result they go home empty-handed and stark naked and no matter their 100 years of being in brotherhood it is of no benefit to them but all those who walk in spirit have life eternal do not come in here to listen to any man but listen only to God it is stated that it is more blessed for one who does not see before believing than the one who believes on seeing. What is the thing that you cannot see? This is the Spirit. You have to receive all the words you are given and put them into practice. 
and with that you are saved. It is for this reason that Paul said, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why don't he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. That was in Romans chapter 8 verses 24 to 25. Brethren, the thing you cannot see is the word of God. Do not come in here for bread. Do not come for position or for cars or for any material wealth, but seek the word of God and put them into practice and you will have eternal life and also overcome the whole world. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 48. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Brethren, be attentive and receive the words and put same into practice. Spiritual chorus. If the word of God dwells in my heart, if the word of God dwells in my heart, I will have life. Brethren, the above is the word of life. But if you come in here and seek money and it is given to you, you become overwhelmed with joy and start shouting, Oh, 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 has given me money. But the word you do not receive, know that you are returning empty-handed. If you are blessed with any material thing without the word of God in you, you are lost completely. Many people who come in here with sicknesses, once they are whole, they go back to their former position without receiving the word and in the long run their sickness will return some other problem will also occur if you come in here because of a particular court case and you are freed from it if you do not have the word another case will arise along the line whatever may be the reason for your coming here. If it has nothing to do with the word of God, then you have no salvation. You have been asked to seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and then every other thing shall be added unto you. Come in here and receive these words and put them into practice because heaven and earth will pass away, but the word will not pass away. And the word is life eternal. If you come into this kingdom to seek the material things of this world, for instance, you want to write an examination. Once you pass the exam, you will go without any word of God. Whatever reason that brought you here, once it is achieved, one is gone. But the moment one comes in here with the intention of receiving these words of life and putting them into practice, then one stands to have life eternal and indeed the whole world and is free everywhere. Beloved, buy this truth and sell it not. Once you receive the word of God and practice it, then it abides with you eternally. The moment you come in here and humble yourself, receiving these words, refraining from stealing, from telling lies, from fornication or hatred, from arrogance, and putting the words of God into practice, 
then you will not have any more problem. All the things you were lacking will come to you and you will be free. The word of God is the fountain of the living water. A man who comes in here because of a court case may declare that once he is discharged and acquitted, he will serve God. But once the case is over, he goes about drinking, fornicating, telling lies, and doing one evil thing or the other. Then, finally, he falls into a greater trouble because he has not received the word of God and does not equally practice it. Many who came with one request or the other and get them granted will not be prepared to pay tithe of even 50 kobo. Instead, they engage in spending their money on women and buying land and spending the money on traditional activities. What is the use of this kind of people? Their position at the end will be worse than their first state. Anyone who comes in here and receives the word of God pays his tithe and does not fornicate and refrains from all sins. The same promise made for these set of people by Christ will equally be accorded him. The moment you practice this word, your ways are straight and there is no occasion of stumbling in you. You will not lack, you will not lament, no, no sickness, no sorrows, no anger, and all your problems will be a thing of the past. About 99% of brotherhood members at the slightest occasion of trouble they cry and lament like frustrated children. This is because they do not come in with the intention of hearing the word of God and practicing them. But any man who hears the word of God and puts them into practice does not have problems. Consider the case of Pastor Etop, who came in here and received the word. On his way home, someone hit his car and the fellow was at fault. Everybody had concluded that Etop was going to take his pound of flesh. But when he got out to inspect the car, he told the fellow to go. For both the car and the young man belong to the father and that the one to repair the car was the father himself. Brethren, how can a person who neither hears nor practices the word of God do that? The cost of repairing the damaged car was over 50,000 naira. Because it abides in the word of God, he has bought and owned the word of God and as a result, he has no problem at all. If you do not receive the word of God and put them into practice, then there is no salvation for you. The only thing that will bring you peace, make you escape the famine and plagues of the, the universe and other social maladies is the word of God and this is the spirit. The moment you have the word of God, you are free. Whether it rains or shines, in death or in life, you are not bothered. Because he abides with you, he will not forsake you and does not deceive you. When you lack, he supplies. When you are sick, he heals. In court cases, he presides over. In loneliness, he is the comforter. And so he is 
everything to everyone. It is said that no condition is permanent. Now, you see the whole world is seeking money. Do you not realize that a time comes when all the money will be exhausted? And in a situation where you put your trust only in money, what will you do? You could get mad and die as a result of heart failure. But the man who buys this word of God and sells it not, one who puts only his trust in God, is one who, no matter the situation, is not worried. Whether the world does exist or not, a man who has the word of God dwelling in him has no cause of, for alarm. He stays in an unshakable state and has equally overcome the world and has eternal life. There is, there is a lot of problems in the world for those who do not hear the word of God. Right from the time of Adam up till this day, there is a lot of problems for this set of people. But as for the man who abides by the word of God, right from the beginning of the world, even until eternity, he has no problems whatsoever. And eternal life is his. To those who do not abide by the word of God, they are always facing problems and they die in problems and they are equally buried in problems. This group of people are slaves to problems. But to them that practice the word of God, they do not have any problems and they move about freely treading on problems and they are always in joy and they are higher than every other thing. Christ had given advice concerning the word of God when the Jews asked him where he was for they had looked for him anxiously without seeing him. He replied that they never wanted him for any other thing but that they looked for him because of the bread they are because of the bread they ate from him, he advised them not to struggle for the food that would perish, but for the one which perish not, which the Son of Man would give. When you go to the water, to the sky, to America or London or the habits and other places to look for life, it is unfortunate, but you cannot have it. Come in here and receive the word and practice it and you will have eternal life. When our Lord Jesus Christ requested the Samaritan woman to give him water and she resisted, Christ told her that if she were to know the person standing before her, she would have asked for the living water, but she was longing for it. For he was the fountain of water which comes down from heaven. With that, the woman did not waste any time in asking for it, explaining that she was ever ready for it. Christ told her to go and bring her husband, and when she replied that she did not have a husband, Christ told her that she had answered well that she had no husband because she had been married to five men already. On hearing the truth, the Samaritan woman did not hesitate in running into the city and announce the good tidings. Do you see the effect of this word which you have been joking with? Even people who have been hearing brother out of the cross and star for over 20 years behave like mad people. When they get a little offended, they will get as wild 
has the Hamatan fire. This is because they do not have any word of God in them. Once you have the word, you have eternal life and will not be angry again. The word of God is like a priceless treasure. When you have it, you have peace, you have joy, health, wealth, and all the virtues of God. The moment you have it, you have eternal life. Beware of the saying that the word can pass away from you, but no market can. Today, as you are aware of this word, do not allow it to pass away. For if you allow the word to pass you by, then you are doomed forever. And all the time you have been here would just be for naught. Anyone who receives this word and put it into practice has escaped death and every evil thing. Those who see and enjoy the glory of God and those who practice this word of God whereas those who came for fish and bread have no place here. Even the dog is better than them. I have a great joy in me because I have a handful of those who have received this word and practiced them and the glory of the Father is made manifest in them. This is why I am rejoicing all the time for when you go on a business trip and record progress or gain, you will rejoice exceedingly. Every hour I feel like flying. I am so moved and can fly because every moment of the day when I come out, I have listeners and students who are ready for the teachings. If I come out at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., they are ever there ready for me. And at the conclusion of my preaching, there are others who would want the Father to continue. Before now, you used to complain that you do not think you will have the ability to cope with the teachings. And now, you are the one requesting that there should be no break. With, the, with this development, I am overwhelmed with joy and happiness. When others come to see you, they ask you the source of your capability and power, and all you do is laugh. The reason is because you have bought the truth and do not sell it to any. You feel so moved and happy because you do not come here for fish and bread and you have made these teachings part and parcel of yourself. When they come with one complaint or another, you laugh and ask, upon all your material wealth, you still have problems. And when you Charge them to kneel down and knock their heads to the Father with the pronouncement of let all their problems are over. You then become overjoyous because you did not come in here on account of those things but on account of the glory of God which comes as a result of putting the word of God into practice. Read the golden text again. Golden text. John chapter 12 verses 49 to 50. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father who sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak, and I know that his commandment is life's everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Brethren, we are now birds of the same feathers flocking together. You and I are now one. You have seen the glory which I have seen. You have equally bought it 
and we have enough to accommodate. Some people claim the word of God is so tough to practice, but have you not seen that the word is the simplest of all things and it is comfortable to everyone? You do not feel angry. You are not tired or weak. You do not hear evil. You do not do anything evil. And you abide in the light always. And wherever you go, people gather around you to receive the heavenly manna from above. This is consummated in the statement of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That was in John chapter 6 verse 51. Brethren, if you do not receive and practice this word, you will not have everlasting life. So be warned. If you forsake this word, life will elude you. There will be no peace, no joy, no happiness. Nothing good will come your way. People like candles, beat drums, clap their hands, buy and spray perfumes, incense, go to India, go to the moon and claim God has even and claim that God has seven hundred names. But here God the Father remains as one entity. And once you say let all spirits and forces are subdued and the victim is discharged. That is why you are told not to toy with the word because it is eternal life as well as the spirit. This word, once it is spoken, remains intact in you and people continue to marvel at this and so they keep on investigating him but he is here in your midst. God's words and instructions constitute love, health, power, glory, peace, wealth, and they are sources of victory over other things. You have been charged to freely give as you receive freely. Do not carry along a purse or gold or shoes or two coats or staff for a workman is worthy of his wages. This is an absolute truth. Anytime you receive his word and practice him before you get to the arena of display, he has manifested his glory. If you give out one car to someone here, over there, 100 cars are waiting for you. When you heal one sickness, yours is taken care of and you sleep sound as a true child of God. Why should a man add anything to God's words? Anytime you venture to add anything to these words of prophecy, punishment is added unto you. When you profess to look for food, does it mean God is not a source of food? Is this very word not clothes and food and with it do you hunger and thirst again or do you sigh anymore? Do you lack again? Now that you have the word, can you ever think of a trade which is more profitable than this? You know of everlasting life and when you sleep, you do not have any body pains. You are now a treasure to your family and the entire world. And when they see you, they shiver. This God is an enjoyable one. You are told that if you sow in flesh, you shall reap corruption. 
But as you sow in spirit, you shall reap eternal life. In no distant time, you will see people coming in from left and right to execute projects of many millions here. And of course, you have started seeing these things. Houses, cars, food, clothes, and good health are all coming in here in a big way. All those who came for the carnal things have all perished and their bones are rotten away and they are all forgotten souls. This is because they sowed to the flesh. It is said that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Those who are here to hear, let them hear. What the Holy Spirit has departed, has impacted to the world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.